Ladies and gentlemen, this is just out. The Durham probe, or John Durham, has released text messages between him and William Barr and information on, or an update on the ongoing special counsel. So this is in the Washington Examiner. Washington Examiner is a fantastic publication. Hopefully one day in the future, hopefully soon, I'll be published in the Washington Examiner. Um, hopefully soon. It's a fantastic publication. And it's, it keeps you up to date on a lot of, you know, a lot of topics that um, I should say that CNN and the Washington Post and the New York Times don't want to talk about. But Justice Department Disclosure Offers Rare Sign of Life from John Durham by Jerry Dunleavy, Justice Department Reporter, and Daniel Chayton, Breaking News Editor. So these are wonderful journalists. It's a wonderful publication. The link is below. Definitely, like, you know, subscribe to it and also just read the Washington Examiner as, as you know, a, a, a source of, um, as, as a wonderful publication that you should just kind of begin to start reading because it's awesome. But here, Justice Department Disclosure offers rare sign of life from John Durham. So I'll get to the fact that, okay, this comes a couple days after, da, 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 following his appointment. Uh, one series of text messages here, okay, da, da, da. The Justice Department released a rare update on Durham's inquiry. A Department of Justice team led by Attorney General John Durham is separately exploring the extent to which a number of countries, including Ukraine, played a role in the counterintelligence investigation directed at the Trump campaign during the 2016 election. Um... This is a little while back, but while the Attorney General has yet to contact... Okay, so this is a while back. Now, there's a lot that they have. There's a lot that they have going. I want to stress something. So you can read this article, Justice Department Disclosure, Disclosure Offers Rare Sign of Life from John Durham. And it talks about the text messages between William Barr and John Durham. Basically, it's just, you know, call me, we need to talk, call me, we need to talk, that type of thing. So William Barr, as much as he could or as much as he wanted to or, you know, as much as he could in terms of politics, helped Trump. He Trump never really had a Justice Department or... Um, a federal government that was on his side, okay? He didn't have media. He didn't have government. He didn't have the Republican Party. He didn't have social media, but he still got over 74 million Americans. Uh, it's pretty good. It's like running a 4 240 with a 100-pound backpack. So he did great things. Uh, Abraham Accords, first president to step foot in North Korea. We had record low unemployment throughout a great... Uh, most, I believe most of his tenure, we had record low unemployment, at least ha around half of his tenure we did. And he did great things, but he didn't have any backup. This is interesting because you kind of see, okay, um, he started the investigation in late 2019. They probably have a great deal of, they probably have a great deal of information that they have to prove without a shadow of a doubt. They have grand jury testimony. I talked about that in my last segment. They have to prove without a shadow of a doubt that there was intent to investigate Trump based on political motivations, which is obvious. Which is obvious. They have text messages from Peter Strzok saying, we'll stop it. We'll stop Trump from becoming president. They have incriminating text messages from a whole bunch of bureau from uh, agents. They need more information. They need to gather more information. They need to gather more information from other countries, from people associated with, like, for example, um, the people involved in, in purchasing the steel dossier, the people involved in uh, obtaining Alexander Downer's um, allegations, okay? I don't even know if Alexander Downer was ever, um, ever made any of his claims under oath. I don't think he has. So Durham, very, Durham, you could look up the history of this man. Very honorable man. 
went after very corrupt officials uh, in Boston. And there are government officials, one in particular that he put, uh, he put away in prison for doing some really, really horrendous things. So you can look up uh, John Durham, and I believe it was um, he put away <clears throat> Durham helped secure the conviction of, re of retired FBI agent John J. Connolly Jr. So he's already put a former bureau agent in prison. He understands this was the whole Whitey Bulger saga that that John Durham was a part of. I mean, a, a part of investigating. In ter and especially in terms of John J. Connolly Jr., the agent that was convicted. John Durham convicted him. So now John Durham is looking at other agents of the wonderful, very moral very ethical, very honorable bureau, and seeing if they tried to either enrich themselves or choose a political side. I mean, I don't really know what more you need in terms of proving bias. The IG didn't say there wasn't bias. They said he, he found no evidence, no testimonial, no, no evidence in terms of testimony um, or documentation. Well, you're not going to get a signed oath from, you know, <clears throat> McCabe and, and Comey. You're not going to get, I mean, they turned on each other also, by the way. Comey even said he would testify against McCabe. So, I mean, it's not difficult, but I keep saying, read the article below. It's interesting, but this is probably going to go on into 2022. You don't, we don't have media. And it's interesting today, um, what we need, like I said, we need Republicans to run the House, Trump Republicans to run the House, okay? I don't think really people understand Trump Republicans are politicians who don't want interventions, regime changes, want Americans home. President Trump, um, on May 1st, 2021, negotiated a deal to bring Americans home home, a way to, to withdraw them from a region of the world that we've been in for 20 years. That's a good thing. I'll take um, a belligerent personality if you do good things like that, okay? And, and our beloved President Biden's personality isn't, uh, you, know, you know, sunshine and, you know, happiness, okay? He's, he's like, Democrats don't have the best demeanor or personalities either. But you don't, like, media props up. I mean, you have every element of society, every single aspect of American society props up the Democratic Party, and they still are going to lose the House in 2022, and they might even lose the Senate. And this new brand of Republicans will be anti-regime change, quagmires, um, and they'll, they'll have a more populist message. The Republican Party will, ha will actually be the closest we'll have to a populist political party. Populism, both left and right, is not a bad thing. Like, they say, the, the centrists say, oh, yeah, it is, you know. But they're just as against populism on the left as they are on the conservative end of the spectrum. Medicare, if you, if you have Medicare for all, it's like a noble ideal. It, it's a noble goal. Uh, it's not feasible, very likely not feasible, and it's something Democrats won't, you'll have a better chance of Republicans than Democrats. They don't, AOC won't even vote on it. Neither will Bernie Sanders. They won't even try to force the vote. Like Jimmy Dore was right. What did Jimmy Dore do wrong? The man's a hero. Um, he, he basically showed the Democratic Party, he showed everybody, all the progressives on the left, okay, it's a racket. They don't want to, they don't want to implement Medicare for all. Okay, but they talk about it. See, Trump, when he says he wants Americans home, he negotiates a deal. When he says he wants peace um, in regions of the world that haven't, haven't seen that, okay, he works for that. 
with the with the Abraham Accords. Uh, we had record low unemployment. Okay, the pandemic was not his fault. Go look at the states that had the worst outcomes. Democratic-run states. God bless the people of New York and New Jersey. They deserve better than Phil Murphy and Andrew Cuomo. I don't know who's worse. Andrew Cuomo's the worst governor of all time. Maybe Phil Murphy could even be worse than him, or just as bad, or maybe slightly better. I don't know. If you're in New Jersey and you watch my show, tell me if Phil Murphy is better than Cuomo or the same or worse. I don't know. So Democrats have presided over the absolute worst outcomes. Look at the New York Times statistics. Seven of the top 11 states account for 40% of the lives lost. And that's, there's a Democratic-run states. 34% of all the lives lost were in elderly care facilities. And Cuomo is directly responsible. And that's not hyperbole for 15,000 lives lost because he put infected people into old, uh, elderly care facilities. And I've, I was telling people this for the past year. It goes in, out, in, in one, year, one year out the other with Democrats. They don't care. They don't care. But here... Um, it's going to take a while. It's going to take going into, and I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, then that will very likely prove that um, people, will, you know, people like Comey or, or McKay or Strzok, look, the chances of any of these people getting indicted before 2022, in my view, is slim. If, if the tables were turned, think of, think of things this way, okay? They had to fabricate, they had to use a dossier that was purchased by Trump's direct political rivals. They had to use intelligence operatives who aren't certain about anything, but they have a hunch. Well, when was John Brennan ever right about anything? He actually uh, uh, unlawfully engaged in surveillance of Dianne Feinstein's Senate when they were investigating the Bush administration. So you tell me when John Brennan was right about anything. Or Clapper. Oh, uh, Clapper. Uh, Chuck Todd, we, ha we uh, don't have direct evidence of uh, improper ties, but we're going to investigate. And, and, and when they investigated, it was like fodder, like, oh my God, like this is the momentum we need politically. Trump never had the media. He never, like, when they talk about Republicans of years past and they, like, they try to prop up Bush, Dan Rather lost his job for a story that wasn't accurate. He, this, was the, this was the media that Bush, um, that propped up the Bush administration. Dan Rather lost his job. He actually, you think any of the journalists, like numerous ones, there, was, there are at least 10 stories that were categorically false. Just recently, there was a Washington Post story where they uh, fabricated quotes. So it's an important, this is an important, um, read the article, it is important. He, he was in contact with, with uh, William Barr. They're looking at other countries. They're looking at, I mean, you're, he's probably looking at every country involved, every foreign intelligence agency involved. People like um, Christopher Steele or Alexander Downer, uh, Joseph Mifsud, all of those, all of those people. The whole thing was a setup. It's not rocket science. Okay, the tinfoil hat theory is that Trump actually purchased Facebook ads with the help of Putin, and then see they spent four years saying Trump is an illegitimate president, and then they say they they cry, uh, you know, in, you know, foul and in. They're in disbelief when Trump says, yeah, you know, whatever he said, <laughs> which we can't talk about. And so you're talking about the height of hypocrisy. But again, you have 74 million Americans to 80, whatever it was, 80 plus million, 84 million, whatever. You say, well, you know, there's only 10 million more, over 10 million more. Yeah, but you have all of media, you have all of Hollywood, you have all of the music industry, you have Major League Baseball, you have intelligence operatives, uh, you have social media companies. What, what? I mean, you have every single possible advantage, and Trump still got 74 million plus people. You have every single, and you didn't even have the Republicans. You have the Republicans on your side. You have Mitt Romney on your side. Look, Mitt Romney <coughs> wants to run again. Do you understand? He believes that he can win again. Or no, I mean, he believes that he can win and run again. Or he believes he can run again 
He'll lose. He would lose again, but he believes this time he'll win because he's a good Republican. And the media will treat him fairly. The media would then say that Trump was better. Y you, look, I'm telling you, if Mitt Romney or Ben Sass became the nominee, you would have articles, you know Trump was better. <laughs> because Trump, he signed prison reform legislation. Um, you know, he allocated more funding to historically black colleges and universities than any president ever. I'm not sure if Mitt Romney would, or, or Ben Sass would do these things. Um, he presided over the Abraham Accords. First president to step foot in North Korea. So media would say, oh, you know what? <clears throat> He's more of a traditional Republican and actually <clears throat> more of an authoritarian. And, and you know what? Even Trump was better. They would never give, they'll never give with this, this media, they'll never give a Republican a fair chance, ever. So the notion that <clears throat> that they're just waiting for somebody normal, that's, n that's nonsense. But give me your thoughts below. Some breaking developments with John Durham. Uh, read the article below. And, and, and the Washington Examiner is a fantastic publication.